Welcome to your practice. Let's start with a seated meditation. So taking something that gives you some height and turning the palms up to the sky. Close the eyes. Be quiet. Be calm. Begin to observe the breath. The inhalation rising up the front spine. The exhalation releasing the back. Relaxing the facial features. Quietening the brain. And meditating on the space between the lungs, the sternum, the fourth center of consciousness, the heart. Then bending the elbows and bringing the palms together in front of the chest, right in front of the sternum area. Deepen this connection and place that which you hold highest in the center of the heart. Feeling that area broaden and come alive the brain receding into the heart. And then softly, gently, release the hands and open the eyes. And we're now ready to start. So go ahead and move whatever you had seated beneath you. And our first pose will be Adomuka Vidasan. So separating the knees, sitting back on the heels and stretching the arms forward. Keep the arms charged, keep the elbow joints firm, the shoulders broad. And as you stretch the arms forward, keep gently pushing the buttock bones back. Feel yourselves through the breath. Begin to feel where the body is open, where the body is tight. Relax the abdomen, relax the face, and press the front thighs to the ground. Deep inhalations, deep exhalations, smooth and rhythmic. Keep moving the trapezius muscles down the back, pressing the back ribs in. And then feeding all of this, go ahead and come up onto your hands and knees. Turn the toes under and come to our first Adho Pushing yourselves away from the heels of the hands. Stretch the arms well. And see if from the heels of the hands you can push all the way up to the sides of the hips. So lengthening the sides of the torso. Firm the knees, push the front thighs back. Make sharp points with the buttocks and push the buttock bones up to the sky. And now fix the shoulder blades, pressing the shoulder blades in. And then stepping forward, the feet the width of the mat, place the hands underneath the feet and find Parahastasan. Bring the front chest, the front abdomen, the front face closer and closer to the front thighs. Keep drawing the kneecaps and the thigh muscles firmly up so that you're integrating the femur bones into the hip sockets. At the same time, press down with your feet into the hands. And then inhaling, looking up, releasing, and jumping back again to Adho Mukha Svanasan. Re-push the front thighs back, firm all the joints of the body, stretch the arms, push yourselves away from the hands, lift the buttocks to the sky, press the shoulder blades into the back to open the chest, to break the resistance of the shoulder blades of the upper back. Observing all of this, and then exhaling, releasing, coming back onto your hands and knees, forehead to the floor, Yoga Mudrasan and Virasan, where we started. See if you can stretch the arms even further. Keeping the shoulders broad, the neck decongested. The brain quiet and calm, even as the body becomes more alert, more sensitive. And then inhaling back up, releasing. Vajrasana. Shoulders back. before releasing. So we're going to come straight now into Shirshasan, so headstand. So either fold your mat up or take a blanket to support the head on the floor. Making sure that it's nice and smooth. Go ahead and line your elbows up right underneath your shoulders so they're no wider than your shoulders. Interlock your fingers together, press the tips of your thumbs together. And having made that secure base, go ahead and bring the crown of the head to the floor. 
Make the base stable, pressing into the forearms, broadening the shoulders, walking the feet towards you. And then go ahead and lift the legs straight up and in this way find Shirshasan. Observe the tendency to take too much weight on the head. Keep checking that you're pressing into the forearms. And as you press down with the forearms, relift the shoulders up over and over again. Stretch the legs completely. Keep pushing out through the balls of the feet, spreading the toes. And feel a strong sense of ascension rising up through the legs. So you're going against gravity, rising up, rising up, rising up. Now wrap the thigh muscles around the thigh bones strongly. Squeeze the knees sharply. Sharpen the ankles. And push all of that energy out through the balls of the feet and higher up to the sky. So that you're moving away from coming down towards the floor but rising up into the sky. Keep the shoulders broad, trapezius muscles moving to the sky, to the feet and to the sky, not coming down towards the ears. And don't let the chin come too close to the throat. When the chin comes too close to the throat, then the cervical spine is starting to bulge in the incorrect way, keeping the chin away from the throat in Shishasan, so that the cervical spine is long, the sides of the neck are even, Press your shoulder blades in, press your back ribs in, and try to broaden the side ribs to feel the intercostal muscles opening, the sternum opening. And then observe what's happened to the breath. Is it still even? Has it become ragged? Find again that rhythm that soothes, that connects. And slowly the body begins to find more and more stability Now, keeping the left leg where it is, slowly with control, lower the right leg towards the floor. Keep that left leg facing straight up to the sky. Avoid the tendency to move it back or forward. When the right foot comes down to the ground, if it comes down to the ground, push into the right foot to refine the ascension of the left leg. Shoulders again broad, face quiet, brain quiet but body strong and alert, fully expressing itself. And then lift the right leg up and refine Shirshasan. Press the tailbone forward again, restretch up through the legs, through the feet. And now coming to the other side, bringing the left leg down as you keep the right leg charged up towards the sky. And if the left foot manages to come to the ground, Press the foot firmly into the ground in order to refine that sense of vertical ascension up through the right leg. Again, broaden the shoulders. Press the back ribs in. Squeeze the knees. Sharpen the ankles. And then slowly, gently begin to lift the leg back up, refinding Shirshasan. Move the tailbone forward again. The front thighs back. Find that ascension through the legs. Now coming to Parshva Ekapara Shishasan, roll the right thigh open and bring it down to the right hand side, keeping the left leg charged, keeping the right foot charged. Keep the shoulders broad, deep inhalation, deep exhalation. And then bringing the right leg back up, refinding Shirshasan. And when we refine Shirshasan after these variations, move the tailbone again forward. It has a tendency to poke out. And now coming to the left, Parshva Ekapada Shirshasan, rolling that left thigh open, bringing the foot to the floor. Recharge the right leg up to the sky. And again, broaden the shoulders, press the shoulder blades in, press the back ribs in. Keep pressing down into the forearms in order to lift up. And then bringing the leg back up and refinding Shishasan. Once again, move the tailbone forward, the front thighs back, charge the legs. Having found the balance, now lowering the left leg in front of you and the right leg behind you, finding an upside down Hanumanasana. 
stretching the legs apart, feeling the groins open, making space between the groins, charging the feet, squeezing the knees straight. Keep pressing down into the forearms, lifting the shoulders up so we don't collapse onto the head, onto the neck area. Keep the back leg very powerful and charged. And then bringing the legs back up, we find Shirshasan, changing sides now. Lowering the right leg down in front of you, stretching the left leg out behind you. Evenly, like a blade, a pair of scissors, the blades that are moving in equal directions from each other. Sharpen the roots of the thighs, sharpen the knees, sharpen the ankles, and express all of the energy of the legs out through the feet, spreading the toes. Feel that length, feel that broadness coming to the body. Press the shoulder blades in. Shoulders broad, face quiet. Observe what's happening to the breath in all of this. And then coming back up and refinding Shirshasan. Make oneness with the legs, charge up, push through the balls of the feet. Find more and more length, see how tall you can grow up to the sky. And then keeping the legs together, slowly coming down through Dandasan and Shishasan, and then feet to the floor, and sit back on the heels, and stretch the arms forward, Yoga Mudrasan in Virasan. Rebroaden the shoulders, and then from there come to Adho Mukha lifting the buttocks, lifting the heels this time, so that you can really lift the buttocks higher and release the lower back. Stretch the arms, press the chest open, Feel the armpit stretching. Look at your front thighs. Push the front thighs back away from you. Keep pressing the chest open to the front thighs and pushing the front thighs back away from you. Soften the neck, soften the face. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Before exhaling and releasing to the ground. This time bring the hands to the side of the body, finding child's pose. Relax and release completely. And now bring the hands behind the back, interlock the fingers, and lift the arms up to the sky, opening the shoulders, rolling the front shoulders open, stretching the hands higher and higher. Keep the face relaxed, the thighs relaxed, the abdomen relaxed. And now move the arms over to the right, allowing the torso to roll to the left to help accommodate this movement. And stretch the hands back so the front shoulders get a clearing energy and now bringing the arms over to the left, rolling the shoulders open. And then bring the arms back up and exhale and release, hands down to the floor. Breathe, relax, observe the difference, feel the upper back, the shoulder blades, the shoulder area. Then again, bring the hands behind the back, change the interlock of the fingers and we recommence the shoulder work opening. See if you can start to feel the shoulder blades themselves as we roll the front shoulders back, the shoulder blades start to push into the upper back, bringing the arms over to the right again, moving the torso to the left. Use the bottom arm to pull the top arm across more and more, stretching the front shoulder back, coming to the middle and now bringing the arms over to the left. Again, use the bottom arm to pull the top arm over, stretch the front shoulder open, Press the shoulder blades in. Bring the arms back to the middle and exhaling and releasing completely. Deep exhalation into the earth before stretching the arms forward again. And then from there, one more time, coming to Adho Mukhashvanasan, Downward Dog. Now this time, bend the knees, stretch the arms and press the shoulder blades in fully. So with the knees bent and the arm stretch, you can really fix the shoulder blades into the upper back. And once they feel fixed and you really feel the shoulder blades pressing in the chest opening, begin to straighten the legs. Hold the shoulder blades in, lift the elbows up, press the shoulder blades down. Again, lift the elbows up, press the shoulder blades down, feel the opening that's coming to the chest. Firm the knees, see if your head can touch the floor. And then slowly, gently, walking the feet forward, having the feet the width of the mat, placing the hands underneath the feet and finding Parahastasan, 
Draw the kneecaps and the thigh muscles firmly up the thigh bone. Draw the femur bone into the hip socket. Now press the back body of the torso forward to press the front body close to the thighs. And then inhaling and looking up. Make length in the front body, length in the front waist before coming back to standing. Stand with the feet together, find Tadasan. And releasing. Now taking a strap and making the loop of the strap the width of the inner shoulders and taking a block and finding a wall. We're going to come to Pincha Mayurasan. So your hands will go like this on the block, making an L shape with the thumb and the index finger. And then you're going to put the strap just above the elbows and it's going to hold the arms parallel. Then go ahead and place the hands into position. See how the elbows are held parallel to each other, straight in the legs. Keep the shoulders broad. Begin to walk the feet towards you. Now lift the right leg up and then hopping, come and find the wall. Having found the wall, line the inner feet up with each other and begin to climb the heels higher and higher up the wall as you press down into the forearms. Press the back ribs in, feel the chest opening more and more. Keep looking up with your head. Keep moving the trapezius muscles up towards the feet. And then exhale and come down. Take the straps off your arms and just a little shoulder opener in Vajrasana, bring the hands behind you, interlocking the fingers and again clear the energy of the front shoulder, get more opening in the chest. So we're going to feed the next Pinchamayurasana with this awareness. Then putting the straps back on your arms right above the elbows, the arms are parallel. Finding again your block, your wall, placing your hands around the block, the thumb and the index finger, straighten the legs. Prepare, walking the feet in, lift the left leg up. So using the other leg and lifting up to Pinchamayurasana on this side. Once again, charge your legs, charge your feet and climb the heels higher and higher. So you're pumping yourselves up as you press down through the forearms, broaden your shoulders. Keep pressing the shoulder blades, the back ribs in, feel the chest opening, the rib cage opening. And then coming back down taking the straps off your arms and again bringing the hands behind the back interlocking the fingers rolling the front shoulders back lengthening the clavicles press the chest open bringing more and more broadness to this area and then exhale and release feel all of this deep inhalations deep exhalations and now we're going to get our chair to do some chair work I love chair work. It's the ultimate way to really have supported deep, deep openings. So go ahead and get that chair and we'll meet back on the mat. So once you have your chair, move everything aside, take your mat and you're going to fold your mat up and we're going to put the mat as padding on the chair because the metal can feel a little intense on our bodies. So I'm folding my mat in half and then I'm folding my mat into another half placing it on the chair and just lining myself up so you can see me from a good side angle. Then go ahead and step into your chair. So you're facing the back railing. And we're first going to come to Vipariti Dandasan. So begin to move your buttocks towards the railing, towards the edge of the chair, lying backwards, feeling the support of the chair as it takes the lower spine, the lower buttocks, and it moves them towards the knees. And the other top edge of the seat has to press into the shoulder blades. Once you've found the right spot, the sweet spot, and you can really feel the chair pressing into the shoulder blades and opening the chest. Take a few breaths to really make this connection before releasing the hands and bringing the arms underneath the chair, inside the legs of the chair, and reaching for the back legs. And then go ahead and straighten your legs pressing the heels down into the floor, keeping the feet charged. So it's not a passive pose. Even though you're using the chair for support, every part of the body is vibrant, including the back body. Notice how I've turned my hands open. So if you look at the way my arms are rotating, the palms are facing to the outside edges of the chair, so the front shoulders are really rolled back. You should feel a sort of tearing in the abdominal area, the skin fibers starting to gently tear and stretch open. 
This will be followed by the muscle fibers. Hold a smooth and even breath and keep trying to go with the guidance of the chair. So moving the buttocks towards the heels, the heels are pressing firmly into the floor. And with the chair, trying to press the shoulder blades into the upper back to open the chest, to roll the front shoulders back, keeping the face quiet, the brain quiet, broad in the side ribs. With each breath, lengthen the abdominal cavity. And slowly allow the shape that's being created by being on the chair to take place, to be held by the cells, by the muscles, by the sinews of the body. And now coming to our next variation, so we're going to take the arms out of the chair, keeping the body where it is. We're going to just stretch the arms straight behind us, turning the palms so they face each other. Look at the parallelness of the arms, rebroaden your shoulders. Stretch the legs and stretch the arms. You'll feel even more of an abdominal stretch here. Go with the length that this arm stretch is bringing to the torso, to the trunk, to the waists. And then bend the elbows and hold on to the upper arms or the elbow tips with your hands. And place the back of your head on your forearms and use the weight of the head to press the forearms down to create even more curvature in the middle and upper back. If you're feeling any strain on the lower back, it's because your buttocks have started to move up towards your shoulders. So keep moving the buttocks towards the heels over and over again so you start to force the stiff area, the upper back of the body to open, the chest to open. Again, quiet in the face in all of this, relax the tongue, the temples, but keep the legs charged, the heels pressing down, the feet alert. And now re-stretch your arms back. And again, find another sense of length, stretching the arms, stretching the legs. And then again, bend the elbows, but changing the cross of the elbows. And again, holding on to the elbow tips, the upper arms with your hands, which is the other side of this variation. If the weight of the head is too much on the forearms, you don't have to press the head into the forearms at all. You can have it underneath. But keep using your fingertips to direct the elbows towards the floor, to press that upper back open, to press that chest open, to broaden the side rib cage, to broaden and stretch the diaphragm. Legs are charged, buttocks are moving towards the heels. And through the breath, observing all of these sensations, these openings, looking for evenness. And then releasing the hands, reaching with the hands for the railing. And then bending the knees so the feet are right underneath the knees. Move your buttocks really to the edge of the seat. Make sure the buttocks are moving towards the knees. Bring the arms back now and walk your fingertips closer and closer so that you're in a backbend stance. Press firmly into the heels of the hands. Try to bring the inner elbows in towards each other. Press the back ribs and the shoulder blades in. And from here, we're going to lift into a backbend. So slowly, gently with an exhale, lifting up. Try to pump up, to pump up more and more. Press the shoulder blades in, press the back ribs in. Firm the arms, straighten the arms completely. Lift up as high as you can. And then exhale, coming back down to the seat and reach for the railing with your hands. And we're going to come from here back up to sitting, so making your way up slowly. Remember to draw the navel to the spine as you come up. And then slowly, gently, just allowing yourselves to rest on the railing. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Before we continue. So now you're going to bring your right leg and you're going to hook it over the railing of the chair. And as you come back down again, move the buttocks forward so that one edge of the seat is supporting the tailbone, moving it towards the feet, and one edge of the seat is supporting the shoulder blades. Now with your right hand, Take hold of the big toes of the right foot and then stretch that right leg to like a Supta Parangustasan 1. Draw the right leg closer and closer towards you while keeping the leg straight. So broad in the back of the knee, broad in the back of the thigh. And then exhaling and releasing, coming back up. And we're going to change legs. 
So bringing the left leg up and hooking the left leg over the back of the chair. Moving the buttocks towards one edge of the seat, coming back down so the shoulder blades are supported by the other edge of the seat. Finding that curvature of the upper back, reaching for the left toe with the left hand. And having found all of this straight in the left leg to Suttaparangustasan 1. Broad in the back of the knee, broad in the back of the thigh, drawing the leg closer and closer towards you. Keep pressing the chest open, keep relaxing the face, breathing, feeling. And then exhaling, releasing from this. And coming back up. We're going to come back to another supported Udvadan Rasan on the chair. So once you have stability, go ahead and move again the buttocks forward towards one edge of the seat. Lie back down. Stretch the arms back. The knees are bent. Find length again in the torso, length in the abdominal cavity. Press the shoulder blades in. Broaden the shoulders. And then bring the hands closer towards the front two legs of the chair walking them, crawling them on the floor. Feel this. Press into the hands to make the upper back alive already, even though you haven't lifted up yet. Begin to feel the power that's required of the upper back. Keep the legs parallel. Don't allow the knees to splay open. And then preparing with an exhalation, lift up to Urvadan Rasan. Stretch your arms. Press the shoulder blades, the back ribs in. Stretch the armpits. Keep pushing into the heels of the hands, lifting up higher and higher. Keep the inner knees coming towards each other and then release. We're going to come back up to sitting now. So gently, slowly, using the elbows, using the upper arms, remembering to draw the navel towards the spine as you come up to support the back. And just allowing for a few minutes of breath, of evenness, before we come back to Ekapada Urvadanurasan, supported on the chair. So right leg comes back over the railing, adjust the body so the seat is supporting the body in the correct way. Reach for the right big toes, stretch the right leg, broad in the back of the knee, broad in the back of the thigh, draw the right leg towards you. Deepen the crease of that front thigh as it comes and meets the hip. Keep the shoulder blades pressed in, the chest open as we do this. And release. Breathe, feel. Making your way back up, stage by stage. Before releasing the leg. And then changing sides, bringing the left leg up. Adjusting the body on the seat of the chair. Finding that curvature, that openness of the upper back, the chest. Take hold of the left big toes. Stretch the legs straight. Squeeze the knee, sharpen the ankles. Draw the leg closer and closer towards you. Keep the chest open. The back shoulder blades, the back ribs pressing in to open the chest as you draw the leg closer and closer towards you. Become aware of where the front thigh meets the hip and deepen that groin connection like a valley that's deepening as you draw the leg closer and closer towards you. And then releasing. Feel one last time the imprint before making your way back up. And putting the leg back inside the chair. So continuing our chair work. One more time, lying back down, adjusting your body so that it's supported correctly on the seat of the chair. The buttocks are moving towards the knees. Stretch the arms back. The shoulder blades are being pressed by the edge of the seat. Parallelize your arms and broaden your shoulders. Feel more and more length coming to the body. Feel the difference in the body now than when we started. Feel that openness, that freedom that's coming. And now again, bringing the hands for Udvadhanurasan. Hands closer and closer to the front legs of the chair, parallelizing your elbows and paralyzing your feet. Lift your toes up now so that you're really pressing into the heels and lift the lower shins up to the upper shins. 
Bring the feet a little bit closer if you can to create more of an arch in your Udvanadrasan and exhale and lift up. Stretch your arms, stretch your armpits. Press the shoulder blades, press the back ribs in. Lift the pubic bone higher, lift the buttocks higher. Keep lifting the toes to lift the lower shins up. Again, buttocks higher, pubic bone higher. One more time, push into the hands, stretch the arms. And then exhale and come down, release. Reach with your hands for the railing, but we're not coming up this time. Bending your knees and coming through the chair to come down onto your shins. Like a kneeling pose, Vajrasan. And placing the buttocks on the heels. You may have to move the chair just a little bit so that you're really supported on the upper back and on the back of the head and your buttocks can be on the heels. And then having found that, go ahead and stretch your arms back. Keep the buttocks pressing down, the front thighs pressing down. Stretching the arms, opening the chest before bending the elbows, holding the tips of the elbows. And in this way, we're finding supported kapotasan. With your fingertips, keep pulling the elbow tips back and down, down and back. Press the shoulder blades in, that final clearing of the chest, broadening of the rib cage. Keep the sides of the neck even, the face quiet, the temple soft, the tongue passive. Keep pressing the front thighs down, don't allow them to lift up. Then re-stretch the arms back. Find more length if possible in the trunk before changing the cross of the arms. And again, with your fingertips, pulling the elbows back and down, down and back, bringing that ultimate curvature into the upper back, that ultimate freedom into the chest, into the lungs, into the sternum area. Relax the jaw, observe the breath. The front thighs are still pressing down. And then stretch the arms back. Reach for the railing with your hands. And slowly coming out as you come out, press the chair down so that the back of the chair will now support the back body. You're seated in Vajrasan. Roll the shoulders back. Let the chair support the back body completely to help it to keep pushing forward. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation, neutralize. And now go ahead and lift the chair up off you and come out of the pose. Now go ahead and come and sit on your chair. We're going to be doing seated twist, Balavajasan on the chair. I'm doing the mirror image of you, so you're twisting to your right. Taking hold of the back railings of the chair, make sure that your feet are lined up, your knees are lined up. With each inhale, lengthen the front spine. With each exhale, turn and twist, turn and twist. Keep the chest open. Let the freedom of the poses we just did be brought into this Badavajasan. Make sure the knees stay aligned so the hips stay aligned. And then releasing and changing to the other side. So you're going to be twisting to your left, reaching with your hands for the railing of the chair. Again, line the feet up, line the knees up. Let the inhalation bring more and more length to the front spine. Let each exhalation turn and twist, shoulders rolled back, chest open. The imprint of the chair and the shoulder blades still firm. And now turning to the other corner of the chair and turning and twisting to your right. So this time you're on a diagonal. You're not completely seated over the edge of the chair. So diagonalize Bhadavajasan. Again, keep the feet alert, the knees parallel, so that the hips are staying in line with each other as you twist and turn. And then gently releasing, coming to the left corner of your chair and turning now and twisting to your left with that same attention to the feet, to the legs, the same openness to the chest. Shoulders back. and releasing. And now for our final pose using the chair. A supported back bend using the wall, using the chair, a bolster and a couple of blankets. So take a bolster and put it on the chair just like this. And then the blankets. 
So one blanket is going to go over the railing of the chair so the railing doesn't dig into the body. And then the other blanket is going to be folded up and put on the bolster to bring more height. Now if you need to put two blankets on the bolster for extra height, go ahead and do that. Then facing the wall, bring the chair right in behind you. And you want to lean back so the chair is right on the coccyx, not up in the lumbar spine, but really right on the lower, lower, lower part of the back. Keeping the knees parallel, the knees will be fixed by the wall. Adjust the chair in such a way that you can lean back and feel the railing supporting the lower spine, the lower part of the spine, pushing it towards the wall, using your hands to support yourself as you feel this action. Keep pushing the buttocks towards the wall, keep the knees parallel, the front shoulders rolling back, and then arch back even more. And at this point, this is where you're going to see whether you need another blanket for your head. The head is going to come and rest on that blanket that's on the bolster. And then you're going to reach your hands back and create length in the pose. Stretch the arms to stretch the waist, to stretch the abdominal cavity. And bending the elbows, reach and find the seat of the chair. And just breathe and hold. It's very intense. Keep the breath smooth. Keep the breath even. Keep the back body strong and lifting up. Use the chair as not only support, but also guidance in which way to directionalize the body. So buttocks moving towards the heels and towards the wall at the same time. Tailbone strongly moving forward. So the arch is taken out of the lower back and moved into the middle and upper back. Broaden the chest. Press the shoulder blades in. Press the back ribs in. All of the poses we've done on the chair have prepared us for this. The body should be open. Soften the face. Quiet in the brain. Allow the form to take place. Allow the body to remember. Then re-stretch the arms back. And then find the railing with your hands and slowly unfurl. And for a second, just allow the forehead to rest. Tilt the pelvis so you eliminate any overarching of the lower spine. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation, neutralize. Stretch the arms up on the wall, Udva Hastasan, keep tilting the pelvis, the buttocks flowing downwards, the tailbone moving forwards the pubic bone lifting up to the face, stretching the arms more and more, Udvahastasan, before gently bending the arms and releasing. Well done. So let's move our equipment aside again. We won't be needing the chair anymore. We can put the blankets and the bolster away. We're going to be coming onto the mat and just releasing the back, the spine from the strong work that we've done and then moving on to some more sitting poses. So on the mat, our first pose will be double godasan. So you're going to place the right ankle on the inner left knee. The left foot is underneath the right knee. And coming forward to yoga mudrasan. Feel the hips broadening, the lower back broadening. Keep stretching the arms forward so you don't stay stuck in the release of the hips, but through the arms you're also stretching the waist, stretching the spine. Broaden your shoulders, breathe, relax. Walking the fingertips forward again, breathe, relax, stretch, lengthen and broaden. Then releasing and changing sides. So bringing the left foot up, placing it on the right inner knee. Double Gadasan on the other side, walking the fingertips forward. We find that length in the arms, that length in the torso and send each exhalation into the hips to release, to relax, to broaden. Relax any tension in the mouth, in the face. Move the trapezius muscles down the back even as you stretch forward so the neck is free and decongested. Then releasing, coming back up. Left leg extended, right knee bent, Janu Shirshasan. Really facing diagonally forward and walk the fingertips forward, diagonally forward. So not over the left leg as you would traditionally in Janu Shishasan, but looking more for a spinal release after back bends. Keep the left leg charged, the left heel pressing down. Then coming back up and turning and twisting over that leg. Twisting, turning, you can allow your knee to come up off the floor, it's fine. As you twist, as you turn, you'll feel the release coming to the back. And exhaling, releasing, changing legs. So now the right leg is extended, the left knee is bent back. 
widen the buttocks to the side and come forward on the diagonal to yoga mudrasan stretch your arms keep the right heel charged pressing down into the ground coming back up we're going to come into the twisted action so twisting turning it's okay if your left knee lifts up gently turning twisting feeling just looking to release to soften the back after all that work and coming back up finding again general shishasan widening the buttock bones apart so the left leg is extended the right knee is bent now turn and twist all the way to the right finding a badavajasan action the left palm is pressing against the right bent knee the right thigh shoulders rolling back the right fingertips are on the floor and now coming to Parivrita Janushyashasan. So slide the left arm down the inside edge of that left leg. Take hold of the inner foot. The right hand is still on the waist. Roll the shoulders back. Roll the bottom abdomen to the top. Then reach that right arm around and reach for the outside edge of the left foot. With your hands, pull the foot towards you. So you pull the left femur bone into the hip socket. And rotate and turn bottom abdomen to the top. Press the back ribs in to turn, to twist. Keep the right knee rooted on the ground, the right hip heavy. And then coming back up. Changing sides, right leg extended, left knee bent. Widen the buttock bones apart again to bring broadness to the inner hips. And turn and twist to the left. Walking the left fingertips back, let the right hand press against the left thigh, the thigh of the bent leg. Roll the shoulders back, find that Bhadavajasan action we just had on the chair. Really feel the abdomen already rotating and rolling. Then left hand to the waist and right arm slides down the inside edge of that right leg, taking hold of the inner foot for Parivrita Janushishasan. Roll the front of the left shoulder back strongly. Roll the bottom abdomen to the top. Pull with your right hand, get your right waist closer to the top of the right thigh, then stretch the left arm up and bring it to take hold of the outside edge of that foot. Use both hands to pull the foot towards you, to pull the femur bone into the hip socket. Rotate and turn and twist the bottom abdomen to the top, keeping the left hip grounded to the earth, the left outer thigh grounded down to the ground. Keep rolling, keep turning, keep twisting. And releasing, coming back up, feeling all of this. And coming again now to a double godasan. So placing the right outer ankle on the top of the left inner knee, walking the fingertips forward broadening the shoulders broadening the hips with your breath immersing yourself into the openness sending the exhale into the hips feeling the release and this time adding a twisting action so turning and twisting to your right in double godasan stretching that left arm forward as you turn and twist so keeping the length even as you twist and then moving to the left, stretching the right arm forward to keep the length. The left elbow can be bent to help the twisting action. Use each exhale to create more sensation, more opening. And coming back up and changing sides. So left outer ankle on the right inner knee, double godasan. Coming forward to yoga mudrasan. Stretch your arms, broaden your shoulders, broaden the hips. Feel the sides of the neck even, the cervical spine extending from the trunk. Try to lengthen more and more the front spine so it doesn't get closed down. And now turning and twisting to your right, stretching the left arm forward, the right elbow is bent. Breathe, relax. And now turning and twisting to your left. Breathe, relax, turn the right abdomen to the left. Stretch, turn and twist. And releasing completely. Coming forward onto your mat, taking hold of the strap, which we'll be using for Padmasan. Bringing the right leg into Padmasan and the left leg. And then taking the strap and using the strap to hold the legs tightly in so the knees don't come too widely apart in your Padmasan. 
and buckle yourself in as tightly as your body can take. Then go ahead and lie down to Supta Padmasana. Make sure the buttocks are moving towards the knees as you stretch the arms on the floor behind you. My thumbs are crossed so that as I stretch my arms I have more traction, more pull. As the arms stretch, feel the armpit skin stretch, feel the waist stretch, feel the abdominal cavity stretch. Keep trying to lengthen the arms even more and more, never allowing them to retract. The shoulders are broad. The back ribs are pressing in, chest is open. And now bringing the knees towards you, lifting them up off the floor, wrapping your arms around them, holding the hands, and settling the back of the head back down on the floor. And in this way, allowing the outer hips to open a little bit more deeply. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Allow the breath to soothe the body. Before releasing and coming up onto your forearms. And arching back now to place the crown of the head on the floor. It helps to hold the side of the mat with the hands so you can really arch back. Lift the chest up to the sky. Stretch the arms straight back behind you now. And then bring the heels of the hands, the fingertips towards the head, like an Udvatanurasan arm. Parallelize your elbows. So this is a version of Matsyasana. And then exhale and release. Allow the spine to neutralize. Re-stretch the arms on the floor behind you. We find that length. Stretch out of any curvature. Keep moving the buttocks towards the knees. Feel the abdominal cavity stretching before releasing completely and making your way back up. Go ahead and unbuckle your legs. And coming now to Upavishta Konasan, pulling the buttock bones out to the side. Roll the shoulders back. Find the straightness of the legs before exhaling and coming forward to Yoga Mudrasan. And in this way, squeezing out the knees. So bringing the stretch of the knees of Padmasan and integrating them into straightness, squeezing the inner knee to the outer knee, the outer knee to the inner knee, before releasing. So now, of course, Padmasan on the other side. So bringing the left foot up and then the right foot. And taking hold of that strap again and placing it, wrapping it around your thighs and tightening yourselves up before settling back to Supta Padmasan on the left hand side. Cross the thumbs and stretch the arms back on the floor behind you. Really keep the arms vibrant. It's the first place to go passive. Really stretch the arms, stretch the fingers and see how you can access the side waists of the body in this way so the trunk remains perpetually stretched and stretching more and more length and broadness coming all the time with each breath. The feet are naturally pulling the roots of the thighs down as you stretch away from them. Relax the face, quiet in the brain, but keep the body alert. And now bringing the knees off the floor and with your hands reaching, lifting up, wrapping, giving yourselves a hug, holding onto the hands, the wrist, whatever you can reach, and settling the head back down on the floor. Broadening the backs of the hips, the outer femur bones, deepening the crease of the front groin. Relax the abdomen. And releasing. Making your way back up only halfway because we're going to be coming into Matsyasana. So arching back, placing the crown of the head on the floor and then reaching the arms back to refine that length that tends to compress. And then see if you can walk the hands towards you, finding a back bend type hand, parallelizing your elbows and press into the heels of the hands to activate the upper back, to press the shoulder blades in, the back ribs in, the dorsal spine in. Keep the shoulders broad away from the ears 
and press the front thighs down through the feet into the ground. Before releasing back down to neutralize the spine, stretching the arms straight on the floor behind you to refine that length as you neutralize. Even stretching the fingertips. Length and broadness. Deep inhalation, deep exhalation. Before gently releasing, coming back up, stage by stage, bit by bit. Unstrapping yourselves. Releasing the feet, the knees. And this time coming to Dandasan, to the legs straight in front of you, but a little bit wide apart, the width of the mat. Fingertips on the floor behind you, roll the shoulders back. Again, press the chest open, look up, back ribs in. And with that openness of the front body, coming forward, step by step, stage by stage, to Pashimottanasan. The most common mistake in Pashimottanasan is to close the front chest, to shorten the abdominal cavity, which is why we prepare first with the fingertips behind us. As you're holding onto the feet, see if you can create more and more length in the front body. So from the pubic bone to the sternum bone, what can you do to make more length? From the lower standing bone to the top standing bone, what can you do to make more length? Keep the shoulders broad and if the elbows bend, lift them up so the shoulders and the spinal muscles can stay broad and wide. Keep the feet charged, the legs alert, the femur bones pulling into the hip sockets, the backs of the legs firm on the ground, the heels pressing down. And then release completely. So coming now into the final part of our practice, we're going to be using our chair now for resting, for support, for halasan. So you'll need three blankets on which you'll be lying down. And then if you're tall, you're going to put your bolster on your chair. I'm about 5'8", so that should help you decide, so that your thighs are parallel to the floor. If you're shorter, you may not need a bolster on the chair. And then go ahead and lie down on your blankets Go ahead and pull the chair in. This is a nice and comfortable restful pose after all the backbend work we've done. So lifting up and then go ahead and place the tops of your thighs on your chair or on your bolster. If you feel that the bolster is lifting you too high, move the bolster and have the legs on the chair instead. Reach your hands back behind your back, interlock your fingers and roll your shoulders back so you're really doing a shoulder stand. And then go ahead and thread your feet underneath the railing of the chair so the legs can be long and the roots of the thighs as much as possible are on the bolster. So if you look at my body, you'll see that the thighs are parallel to the floor, thus the height of the bolster. The arms are stretched, the arms are pressing down into the ground. The bottom is facing up to the sky and the torso is perpendicular to the earth. Deep inhalations and deep exhalations. Allowing the pose to do you. Feeling the release that it brings, the relaxation that it brings. Keep gently stretching the arms back so that the shoulders are open. Feel how the chair or the bolster is helping the front thighs to push up to the sky. The backs of the legs are open. Everything is supported, comfortable. The chin is close to the throat in the Savangasan action. And then go ahead and bending your elbows, support your back body with the hands and see if you can bring the chair even a little bit closer so that really the roots of the thighs close close to the hips are supported now by the bolster and the chair then re-stretch your arms behind you interlock the fingers again and enter more fully the pose until the roots of the thighs are supported you're kind of half in the pose it's when that final bit when you adjust and you pull the chair in and you really support the roots of the thighs close to the hips that you find that final place 
of letting go of surrender to the pose and also final comfort. Breathe, relax, quieten the brain, soften the face, the cheeks, the tongue, the temples. Keep stretching the arms and pressing the arms down to the floor so the shoulders keep opening even as we rest, even as we're supported. And now change the interlock of your fingers and re-roll the shoulders back, the left shoulder, the right shoulder. So we're doing what we call the other side of halasan. Keep the inner knees touching, the inner feet touching. That alignment present, even as we rest. Keep softening the face, softening the tongue. Evenness and softness. And gently release the hands and bring now the hands just to the side to rest, taking away the shoulder opening. Another level of softness coming. See if you can get the legs even further back so you're even more on the bolster. Complete support on the front thighs. Letting loose, pacifying, almost hanging off the bolster in the chair. The lower back is completely relaxed and broad and soft. Just a little bit more. Keep the breath even, fluid. The legs aligned, the hips aligned. Allowing this opening to come, allowing this support to come. now releasing, holding the front legs of the chair, moving the legs out and placing the hands on the mat for support and slowly, gently, with control, unrolling back to the ground. And then immediately just move the chair back away from you and move your body back so that your hips are on the blanket and your shoulders are now on the floor. So you're in a natural Siddhu Bandha Sarvangasana. The feet are underneath the knees and the buttocks are directionalized towards the feet. So the lower back is completely supported, the abdomen is soft. The chest is naturally opened. And then rolling over to the right hand side. And we're going to come to Shavasan now. So just moving that bolster off the chair. We're going to use the chair in Shavasan for our legs. So you can just go ahead and put your extra blankets on the chair, keeping one for your neck and head. And then lying back down on the mat, placing the calves on the chair, making sure the blanket is right underneath the neck and the head, but not underneath the shoulders. Extending the arms out to the side and rolling the shoulders back so the palms naturally face up to the sky. Adjust everything so you feel complete comfort. The lower back should be completely supported on the floor. The thighs are relaxed. The shoulders are naturally open. The 
throat is soft, the face is quiet. Melting into the floor. Letting yourselves be completely loose. Letting go completely into the earth. An absolute state of rest and surrender. Soft, smooth, relaxed breath. Allowing the eyes to naturally recede downwards and backwards towards the back of the skull. Resting completely in the eye sockets. In a similar fashion, drawing the outer ears inwards towards the inner ears and drawing the inner ears inwards towards the brain, in this way releasing and relaxing even more completely. The tongue receding towards the back of the throat. All is soft. All is quiet. slowly, gently, bending the elbows and just bringing the hands to rest on the abdomen. And in this way, with this amount of gentleness, allowing ourselves to come out of Shavasana. No abrupt movements, gentle, quiet. And then bending the knees, bringing them off the chair. And rolling over to the right hand side of the body, laying here for a few breaths for as long as you need. Until you feel ready to rejoin your day.